How's it going everyone? So I got the Galaxy S10 and my review for that is coming soon. But in the meantime, let me show you the best ways to customize it, including how to remap the Bixby button to open Google Assistant. So make sure to watch the entire video so you don't miss out on that. Also, I started selling merch related to Android. I'm selling some stylish hoodies, shirts, and joggers. I'm currently wearing a dark mode only shirt, as you can see, dark mode only in text. And uh, we ship all over the world, including India for all my Indian fans. So make sure to hop on over to howtoman.shop to show your support. The link will be right below that like button. Anyways, I'm not sure if you can tell, but most of the Galaxy wallpapers included in the S10 are a bit darkened in the right corner uh, to actually hide the dual camera hole punch. Personally, I think a hole punch looks way better than a notch, so why not embrace it? Here's a couple of wallpapers that I found that get the job done. All those walls will be linked down below. There's even a subreddit page to embrace the hole punch. Some of them are pretty funny as well. Along with the subreddit, a well-known developer called Chainfire created an app called Heidi Hole to automatically download or apply all of the wallpapers within this subreddit. It has plenty of amazing features such as categories, allows you to filter the walls by the type of phone that you have, and lets you sort the walls by new or popular. Or there are two wallpaper apps called AMOLED Walls and WallHub that have some great Galaxy S10 wallpapers. So if you have an S10, I encourage you to check out the Reddit page or one of these apps. Now, before I move on, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. This website is a great way to learn about a broad range of interesting topics. There are more than 25,000 classes to join and learn about something new. Topics covered include content for creators, photography, business, technology, etc. More specifically, if you're starting a YouTube channel, they have great tutorials for lighting, cinematography, tutorials for Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and more. Or maybe you're trying to start a business and need some advice from successful entrepreneurs. They have that. Music production, mobile development, web development, marketing, writing, graphics design, you name it, they have it. Personally, I signed up for a color grading course to improve my colors within my videos, a Python course, a few entrepreneurship classes, and a productivity course to better organize my busy schedule. The premium membership, which gives you unlimited access to all of their classes and communities, isn't even that expensive. Getting their annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. However, the first 500 people who use the link in the description to sign up will get a two month free trial. So give Skillshare a try, especially if you wanna learn a few new things in 2019. If you really wanna customize the S10, Samsung released Good Luck 2019 with Pi support. It's an app within the Galaxy Store that lets you customize various system UI features. It's a great way to completely change the look and actions of your lock screen. So usually with any Samsung lock screen, you have to swipe up to unlock, but Lockstore gives you the option of swiping anywhere on the phone to unlock it. On top of that, you can change the style, such as customize the background, change the placement of the widgets and app shortcuts, add up to six app shortcuts or have none at all, completely change the clock to a different preset, and decide what items should be on the lock screen. So if you wanna remove the status bar, clock, or every item on the lock screen, you can do just that. Quick Start lets you modify the status bar and quick settings panel. By default, you can already mess around with the tile order and grid size, but with Quick Start, you can change the overall look. For the first time in a while for Android Pi, you can finally change the clock position to the right side or hide it completely. For the quick settings, you can customize the colors of the icons, text and background, change the opacity of the panel and create a blur and dim effect. Behind the panel, there's a section called indicator elements, which lets you add or remove icons from your status bar. And lastly, you can add a third button when you swipe on a notification within your notification panel to quickly open that app in a window. Also, for those curious, if you expand the quick settings and tap on the three dot menu and hit status bar, you can show all the notification icons instead of just three and have the battery percentage as well. Back to good luck, Task Changer is the next app which allows me to modify the style of the recents menu. You can change the scroll effect to something more interesting such as a carousel, grid, list, or stack. For those who have a horizontal scroll such as stack or carousel effect, you can have a mini mode which makes it easier for one-handed use. Personally, I'm a stick with grid because I can see way more apps at once than with any other selection and task changer, but every preset has beautiful animations and transitions that look way better than Samsung's default recents menu. Clockface gives you a few more options to customize the clock on both your lock screen and always on display. On top of the default selections, you can also get an extra 30. Just scroll all the way to the end and tap the black square icon with the clock and you should see the extra options. Plus you can change the color of the clock. By the way, for those who don't know, you can add a GIF in the always on display. Just scroll towards the middle until you see a box with an animation and you can add any personal GIF from your gallery or choose one of the few selections that Samsung has. Multistar is a new app that just got released. This lets you add extra features with the multi window, snap window or pop up view action. For starters, it can change the color of the split screen bar. 
But the cool new features is that you can now play two videos at the same time with split screen. Before you can only play one video at a time. And the second amazing experimental feature is that you can force all the apps to work with multi windows. You can also enable pop up view action to quickly turn a full screen app into a floating window by swiping down diagonally from either corner of the top of the screen. Navstar is a new app within Good Lock, which is one of my new favorites. It allows me to modify the three button nav bar. Samsung include various new templates with different icons, but if you hop into new configuration, not only can you change the background color and transparency, but you can also change the button positioning and customize each icon individually. You can even change back to the old Samsung icons if you really like that previous design instead. Or do something crazy and add random icons for each button such as a cat for the home button, a hamburger for the back key, and a weather icon for the recent menu. It'll definitely throw off someone who is trying to use your phone. But probably the coolest feature with Navstar is that you can add an extra button, such as adding an extra key to quickly take a screenshot, have music controls, buttons to scroll down in increments instead of just using swipe gestures, open the notification panel, or even have an icon to quickly launch the default browser app. Navstar is a really good reason why you would want to stick with a three button navbar instead of using the full screen gestures. Those were all the unit apps, but in the family section, there are even more apps for customization. Nice Catch is yet another new Samsung app that lets you see a history of various system UI actions. You can see a history of all the apps that made a vibration, see apps that changed the ringer mode and call mode, there's a toast messages history, you can change what apps displayed ads after unlocking the phone, and see a list of apps that woke up the screen. One Hand Operation Plus makes it easier to navigate the device with one hand. It does this by placing two bars on the edges of the screen, and when you swipe across either bar, you get to go back, and swiping up diagonally will bring up the recents page. Obviously, you can change the swipe functions, the width of the touch area, and more. It's a great option for navigating a big phone like the Galaxy S10 Plus. Edge Lighting Plus is simple. It lets you customize the edge lighting feature that shows up when you get a notification. Personally, I enjoy the wave effect, and for the color, I have it set to custom color for all of my apps to provide an incoming notification. For example, for Snapchat, the edge lighting is yellow. For Facebook, it's blue. Twitter is light blue. WhatsApp is green, etc. To do this, on the main page of Edge Lighting Plus, tap on color then custom color, then manage notifications, and finally enable all available apps. Now I can differentiate the edge lighting effect by the color. Edge touch is a great way to prevent unintended screen touches by setting up zones around the edges of the phone. These zones won't respond to touch. If you're rocking a one to two year old Samsung device without a case, you may want to use this app since your palm can easily interact with the screen when you're holding it, since the screen edges are really curved. Lastly, Sound Assistant is a great way to control the sound settings and enable a few extra features. You can preset sound volumes for individual apps, set scenarios, switch audio from stereo to mono when listening with one ear, and having a floating button that only pops up when you press the volume rocker. But I think the two coolest features within this app is within the control audio menu. Dual app sound can allow an app to play sound at the same time while another app starts to play audio. So now my Spotify music no longer gets paused when I scroll through my Instagram stories or I begin to watch a YouTube video. Separate app sound is great for when I want to play my Spotify media just on my Bluetooth speaker while everything else is piped through my phone. Now for the home screen, I recommend switching to a third party launcher because you get more control over how you like your setup to look. Two of my recommendations is Launcher V2 and Hyperion Launcher. I'm personally using Launcher V2, but both have similar settings and features. I'll drop a link down below so you can quickly restore my profile settings, wallpaper, and widgets. For the widgets, I'm using a KWGT app called Cheesecake, stays out of the way of the contents on my wallpaper, and of course I have Lawn Feed to enable the Google Feed panel. For Hyperion, the extension is called Hyperion Dock. All those links will be right below the like button. For my icon pack, I'm using Afterglow. I changed all of my icons on the dock to match the Samsung stock icons so I don't completely get rid of Samsung's One UI look on the homepage. I also recommend that everyone do this if you want to save a ton of battery life, enable night mode in the settings under display. Doing so will darken all the Samsung stock apps, the settings, notifications, quick settings panel, and more. You should really take advantage of that amazing AMOLED display. In that same menu out of the box, all Samsung devices have the resolution set to 1080p to save battery, but if you care more about pixels, then you should change it to Quad HD. And towards the bottom of the display menu, you can change the navigation bar to the native Android button order and even enable full screen gestures for more screen real estate. You can also disable the gesture hints if you don't want anything at the bottom of the screen. Lastly, one of the best features that got added once the Galaxy S10 was released was the option to remap the Bixby hardware button to whatever app you like. Granted, not every app or service is on the Bixby list of supported apps, but with a small trick by the developers of Tasker, I was able to finally remap the Bixby button to open Google Assistant, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. So immediately drop a thumbs up for that. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have the latest Bixby version. Just go into the Galaxy Store, tap the three dot menu, 
my page update and tap on update all. Also make sure you download Tasker in the Play Store. It does cost $2.99, but it's worth it if you're tired of Bixby. Also scroll down to the bottom of the Apps Play Store listing and become a beta tester. This step is very important, so make sure you don't skip it. Then open Tasker, create a profile, select event, Tasker, and then tap on secondary app opened. Go back, add a new task, tap the check mark, press the plus button, and in the search filter, type in voice. You should see an option called voice command and tap on it. Go all the way back to the Tasker homepage and tap the check mark at the top. Then press the Bixby hardware button, tap the three dot menu, settings, Bixby key, select the option that says double press to open Bixby, enable use single press, tap the gear icon, look for and select Tasker secondary, and then press the Bixby button and the first time you'll get a menu asking to choose between Google and Bixby voice, red pill or blue pill, choose Google and select always. And that's pretty much it. Now every time you tap on the Bixby button, Google Assistant will pop up instead of Bixby. Anyways, that's how I customized my Galaxy S10 out of the box. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Don't forget to check out my new merch at howtoman.shop, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Kapow!